Welcome to another episode of UEN PD TV. I'm really excited to share this episode with you because we are at the University of Utah School of Dentistry and I'm sitting next to an incredible risk taker with technology in the classroom. This is Dr. Durham. Hello, hi. And uh, Dr. Durham, you're using VR with dental students. Where'd you get the idea to do that? Yeah, it is kind of an interesting blend. Dentists are oftentimes very conservative and not seen as risk takers. Um, but the reality is um, the technology is so useful that it's uh, useful to help us decrease cost, to help us scale to more uh, students, and to help us get better mental models in their heads faster. And so that doesn't seem like much of a risk to me. It just seems like the right thing to do, right? So by us creating this type of technology, we can do procedures um, that are very expensive for us to do or high risk procedures in virtual reality and roll them out without a big risk or cost in that sense. So what's your experience with VR? What, where did you make the connection to, hey, this virtual reality, which some people consider to be kind of a gimmick, could actually be a progressive use of uh, instructional technology in your classroom? How did you right. make that connection? We've been thinking about it for about two years. But um, in the last years, um, working with uh, Ben Engel, who's the, the lead creator, designer of all the, the stuff you'll see, his work has always been focused on not gamification, but education. So every single thing he does, even the selection of colors he's choosing in the application, the modules he's making, is designed to really push education. And so now you have Dr. Durham comes in and you start talking about VR. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved and how this all took off with VR in this classroom. Uh, so originally, I, I actually took a class. Uh, it was virtual reality and serious games over in the EAE department. I took that class and I built just a small little application for uh, learning anatomy. And I showed Durham that and that was kind of like the first thing of like, well, what if we did the same thing, but in his field? And that's sort of how it slowly evolved. So we walk into a classroom and we see all these kids with VR goggles on and Dr. Durham's teaching. It looks a little science fiction, but if you, uh -huh. pardon the analogy, if we pull back the curtain and we see the wizard, you're really the wizard that's making everything happen, right, with the VR? Yeah, so I do all of the 3D modeling, all of the texturing, all of the programming, so, uh, if you put on one of the headsets, everything you see, touch, feel is I made by hand. So you're, you're literally building curriculum and content week to week in a virtual reality world. Yeah. And then when it comes time to teach this class again next summer, can you take everything you've made and pretty much like yeah. control yeah, copy and control just a one paste? One. Yep. Do you feel confident, like all technology, that this is just gonna get better, smaller, and less expensive? For sure. It's already gotten a lot better, a lot smoother. Does your AI uh, know that it exists? And if it does, does it have a soul? It does not. So it doesn't have a soul? No. You have to make sure to type in soul equals false. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sitting down now with Jake, yep. who is about to start his third year here at the School of Dentistry at the University of Utah. And, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the VR you're using in Dr. Durham's cool. class. Yeah. Have you used VR before this class? Next to none, no, yeah, hardly at all. So pretty much first experience and it's been really interesting, yeah. Okay. And you're using the, the Vive, correct? Yep. Hooked yes. up to laptops and you're working in groups. Tell us a little bit about the, just the setup and, and how you're learning in groups with uh, VR. So our class is a class of about 50 and he's divided us up, in, up into five groups. So he has five computers, five headsets, and then with those headsets, there's two individual hand pieces. Um, and then we just rotate through, and it's been really interesting that as one individual is in the VR world, um, experiencing all the materials, dental, dental instruments that we use, the others are able to watch on the computer screen. And maybe somebody will see something that they hadn't seen before, and, and let's say I'm working with you, I'll say, hey, I, I haven't seen that piece, would you mind picking that up and showing me? And with those hand pieces, they can pick up different tools that we use in dentistry. And the even cooler part is, some of the things in dentistry you can imagine got to go in your mouth, they're super small. So they can grab it and enlarge it and make it very visually, um, it's easy to, to, to capture visually some of these small pieces that otherwise would be difficult to really understand what's going on. 
So based on everything that you just said about VR in your class, okay. do you see potential for this technology in learning in the future for you or even in the, in the field? Very definitely. Um, so to give you a little bit of history, Dr. Durham sent out an email to our class um, a number of months ago and, and asked a couple of us to participate in kind of the pilot for this. Went to the first meeting and I won't lie, I kind of looked at it and thought, what in mm. the world are you talking about? This is weird, <laughs> man. I don't know. I don't, I'm a non-believer. Science fiction gimmick, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And then he brought us the product and we got, a, we got a toy around with it. We got to experience the VR world. And I thought, you know what? This is very interesting. There's kind of a lot of potential here. I think the easiest way to understand it is equating it to the internet when it was first introduced way back when. So many people heard of the internet. They talk about it on the news and nobody could understand what the internet was. We look at life today and we can't imagine life without the internet. I truly believe that VR is potentially the internet of today that we have this technology available to us, we're pioneering it, and really we're just barely starting to step through the threshold of what can really be done. So I'm sitting here now with Dr. Linton, and you've been a dentist for how long? About uh, 38 years. 38 years, and, and your role in this classroom is as a mentor or an attending and you're working with students in small groups and supporting what Dr. Durham is doing. Uh, I'd like to know from your perspective, uh, how is the learning that's happening in the classroom today different from when you were a dental student in the early 70s? Well, when I was a dental student, first of all, we didn't have any of this modern equipment. We didn't even have implants. But we went to the class, we listened to a lecture, and then went home and tried to do our, our homework. It's flipped right now to where, in this class anyway, we go home, listen to the lectures, then come to school with the rest of the classmates and the instructor and do our homework here together. So if we don't understand something, it's explained to us and we learn it much better. What, from your perspective, what, what do you see the students in VR getting from the technology? Is it, is it a different type of learning? Uh, is it a deeper learning? Is it more active? Yes, the learning used to be just over the shoulder and you'd open up your first surgery case and they'd point out the bone and the parts of the anatomy that you want to avoid mm -hmm. and parts that are, are vulnerable. And it's right there and it's covered with blood and it's hard to really see very well. Here we can take it in VR and hold it up in the air and do it with virtual reality and do the measurements, do everything we need off the CAT scan, and then go downstairs and we know exactly what the measurements are, where to put it before we even start on the patient. So it's a great aid. So it sounds like beyond the classroom, uh, a dentist or an oral surgeon could use VR to prepare for an actual surgery. We're getting real close to that, yes. So what was your initial reaction when Dr. Durham said, hey, we're going to use VR to do this? What, what did you think? I thought we were going to go on a ride on a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done that? Have you done the roller coaster VR yet? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so were you resistant? Like, did you think this is not going to work? No, Dr. Durham is quite advanced in his teaching techniques. And so I was looking forward to it. I knew he had something up his sleeves. Well, Dr. Durham, thank you for having Absolutely. us. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure yeah, to be in the dental fun. school. And uh, thank you for your time and for sharing. And I wish you the best of luck with all of this. And your students are definitely thriving in it and had great things to say about it. Awesome. So keep up the great, great. work. Uh, thank you. thank you for joining us on UEN PD TV. I'm Michael, and I hope to see you on the next episode. And if you're interested in mixed reality, virtual reality, augmented reality, and even a little bit of RR, real reality, join us at our mixed reality course. You can sign up for that course or any of our classes online at uen.org slash register.